Well, today we're having a general membership luncheon with delegates that are going to Washington, D.C. in October. Congressman Deutsch is going to be our keynote speaker, and we're recognizing all of our sponsors and just kind of framing the issues that we'll be bringing to Washington. Things like beach renourishment, Port Everglades expansion, uh, em employment trends, education, workforce development, regulatory reform, those types of things, all related directly to job growth. This is a time where all of our elected officials are looking for the voice of who we are, what we can do, what do they need to do to representatives, what can they do to help us, where do we need to move our economy and our businesses to. And it's a pleasure today to have Congressman Deutsch, who represents our 19th district. Congressman Deutsch's priorities include creating jobs, helping small businesses grow, and strengthening the retirement security in America investing in public education, and building an infrastructure that gives American businesses, workers, a competitive advantage in the global marketplace. Uh, I'm excited to be here and even more excited to welcome so many of you to Washington uh, in really just weeks now. Uh, Washington Summit 2013 is something that we've been very involved in, and uh, given the gridlock uh, that takes place in Washington, uh, it will be a thrill to welcome friends from home uh, up to Washington. Because this fly-in will do more than provide you with the opportunity to connect with policymakers and agency officials, uh, I'm awfully excited about it. It's going to do more than that. It's going to give the leaders in Washington a reminder of what it looks like when business and communities work together with a sense of common purpose. Look, participating in the Washington Summit 2013 our businesses and companies, large and small, from an array of industries and different fields, from manufacturing and technology to law and health care. And you may not agree on every single issue. I know as well as anyone that sitting in this room today are some Republicans and some Democrats and some independents. I know that you don't always agree with each other. It may even be so that you don't always agree with me. But as stakeholders in the South Florida community, you're well aware of what we can accomplish and that we can accomplish so much more by working together than by working against one another. Whether we're talking about investments in infrastructure or the state of the housing market or protecting our public schools from more cuts, we need Congress to recognize that finding common ground is the only way to move forward. We need bipartisan collaboration instead of relentless obstructionism, and we need compromise instead of ideological extremism. Now, there is no shortage of ideas out there to generate faster growth. And I applaud the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce for making infrastructure a priority, and specifically expansion of the Port Everglades. We know that the word investment hinges on the promise of a return. It's the way it is in your businesses. That's why it's so important for us as a country to invest in the 21st century infrastructure and pave the way for an, another American century in the global economy. Sequestration was put out there because it was so terrible and such a bad idea that everybody knew that Congress would, would have to come together to prevent it from happening. Unfortunately, sequestration is what we're facing now. Instead of ramping up investments in renewable technologies that help companies like Florida Power and Light become even more innovative, sequestration is drawing back grants, it's drawing back loan guarantees, and other support critical to advancing these sectors. If growth is going to be our priority, then we need business leaders and policymakers to actually come together and replace sequestration with something that actually resembles real economic policy. Your visit to Washington and the timing of your visit to Washington comes at the most opportune moment as that debate will be front and center. And while some of my colleagues have suggested that we simply replace the sequester with deeper cuts, the truth is that during the recent appropriations process, we saw too often the difficulty uh, to struggle with the cuts that are already, the severity of the cuts that are already in place. The economists at the C Congressional Budget Office, the CBO, have estimated that immediately repealing the sequester, repealing the sequester, would boost our GDP by $113 billion and generate close to a million new jobs in 2014. So the numbers are backing up what we already know in our gut. The last thing that our economy needs as we continue to struggle to fully recover from the Great Recession is $1.2 trillion in cuts that are wholly irrational and simply across the board without thinking. Compromise and bipartisan collaboration, no matter who is in charge, has always led to progress. 
Our history is full of examples. I'll close with just a handful to try to end on a more upbeat note. A century ago, a century ago, growing old in America was synonymous with becoming destitute. That's what happened when you grew old. When President Roosevelt proposed a wage insurance program to guard against poverty in old age, it was highly controversial. But in 1935, nearly 100 Republicans joined with the Democrats to pass Social Security into law and create the most successful domestic program in our country's history. Likewise, Republicans and Democrats came together in the 1950s to embrace President Eisenhower's vision for a nation connected by roads in order to open commerce throughout the whole country. When the House unanimously approved the Federal Highway Program, they authorized what would today be more than half a trillion dollars of investment in the most necessary infrastructure that we could have imagined at the time. And from the creation of Medicare, with the support of 83 Republicans in 1965, to the establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency by President Nixon, compromise, compromise and old-fashioned hard work have always fueled progress in Washington. That's how we've gotten things done. Americans are diverse in their opinions. This room is diverse in its opinions. We may not agree on every issue, but Americans agree in overwhelming numbers that the status quo in Washington isn't translating into the results that you want to see at home. In just a few weeks, the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce will have the opportunity to advocate for those kind of results. Results like 21st century infrastructure and a secure energy policy. Results like more jobs and financial security. Results like a stronger South Florida economy and a brighter future for everyone who calls at home. That is what I'm looking forward to championing with you during your Washington Summit 2013. I very much look forward to welcoming you to Washington, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity today. Thanks very much.